interesting topic and excellent presentation. Uh, we move on to the next session for today. We have with us our next speaker, Mr. Aditya Garb. He is the founder and director at QA Agility, a passionate agile testing evangelist, steering committee member of Agile Testing Alliance. He has also published a book, Practitioner Guide to Test Automation Using Selenium. The topic for today is IoT, Trends, Raspberry Pi Demo of Simple IoT, and definitely project management relevance. I welcome Mr. Aditya Garb. Thank you so much. <coughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, after Rohit's presentation, when you can feel the goosebumps out, just before lunch, I'm going to talk about something simple, OK, IoT. Uh, my name is Aditya. I'm going to be assisted by my colleague, Harsh. Uh, can you hear me, guys? OK. I'm just going to test. I'm a tester by nature as well. What did I do? OK. So normally, I start with a prayer. If you allow me, can I do that? <clears throat> Sarvesham Swastir Bhavtu, Sarvesham Shantir Bhavtu, Sarvesham Purnam Bhavtu, Sarvesham Manglam Bhavtu. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Let there be peace. After hearing a war story, be at peace, OK? Because that's what is going to happen now. All right, are you guys ready? I can't hear you guys at the back. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good. So I, I'll transfer some of my energy out there. See if we can make it an interesting session, OK? <clears throat> now, my presentation will be divided into three sections. First one is IoT. Second one is an IoT demo. So if you look at the side here on the table, we have set up a Raspberry Pi. Uh, we'll talk about what is Raspberry Pi and how a simple IoT solution can be done. And the third part of the presentation would be the relevance to project management. Sounds good? So that is the uh, expectation that you guys should have. Now, before I start, let me quickly give you the trends. Now, if you look at it, as of basically between 5th and 11th November, the IoT trend was 100%. Now, this is where the Western world has picked up a lot. I was doing a, a quick analysis. IoT has become the number one trending topic in US, Europe, even in China. And we would see something happening in India as well. Because if you talk about machine learning, if you talk about AI, everything is driven from a lot of this data. And where this data comes from, all IoT. Many of it. So when you talk about cameras, when you talk about sensors, all that is all IoT, guys. <clears throat> now this was basically a two week uh, before basically I did a presentation, and uh, the slide is from there. We see that for on the IoT startups, we're talking about 37 billion US dollar venture capital investment that has happened. Number two, there are 20 categories which range from all across the industry, whether it is agri-tech, whether it is drones, whether it is robotics. Uh, even defense, for that matter, because when you talk about drones, defense comes into play, or any other industry that we are talking about. We, we also talk about something IIoT, industrial IoT. Fair enough. This is where the range of IoT applications is happening with an investment of about 37 billion US dollars. Now, from a project management perspective, this is something which happened yesterday or day before yesterday when I saw this. <coughs> If you look at it, it says industrial IoT adoption rates are high. How much high? As high as 98%. And we're talking about transportation, oil and gas, and every other field. But the deployment maturity is low. Now, this is basically which gives you an area where, from a project manager perspective, how, as a PM, we'll be able to utilize this situation for our own advantage. Right? So I will connect this on the third side of my topic, which is at the end. Okay. Now, Question, how many of you have heard of IoT before? All of us? Before we jump to what is IoT, can somebody tell me what is internet? <clears throat> Anybody can go ahead and tell me. Let's keep it interactive. Is that OK with you guys? Because at the end, you're going to ask me a question. Let me start it right ahead. So can somebody tell me what do you mean by internet? Network of, Network of interconnected devices. Anybody else? Are we all using internet? Now, what comes to your mind when we talk about network of interconnected devices? It is medium of communication. How does medium of communication happen? Through internet. But what exactly is internet? <clears throat> How does it work? Any, anybody 
who can explain a very simple definition other than the one which is basically network of interconnected devices. What are these network of interconnected devices? One computer to another computer. So for example, I'm going to ask you a simple question. How, all of us are on Facebook. Is there anybody in this room who is not on Facebook? A big round of applause for him, guys. <laughs> now, when we click something on Facebook, do you know how does the request travel through? What happens? Anybody can tell me how many servers does Facebook have? Any rough idea? Does everybody understand what is a server? It's a machine, it's a computer. So when you say computer to computer connection, network of interconnected com uh, machines, right? So when you click on a Facebook page and you like something, what is going on? Can you tell me what is the request response? How does it go? How does it come back? Data transfer, how does it happen? Is, so when you click on a mobile, there is an app, or if you click from a browser, the browser or the app acts like a client. When you click something on it, the request goes to the server, and the response is then sent back. This is basically the communication that is happening, right? When we talk about this internet happening, it's all about basically how do we communicate with machines. That's, is that okay with everybody? It can be through uh, Amazon, it could be through Facebook, it could be search on Google, or anything that we are seeing, right? So now, let's come back to the topic of the day, how and what is IoT? So if you look at it, this is the evolution of internet of things. The first one, which is pre-internet, rather than Facebook, we were all talking to each other. Human to human communication. Now, if you go and, and there are a lot of these uh, mobile on WhatsApp, you might have seen the videos, where you would find people actually sitting on the dinner table and not talking to each other. Is that happening? Or when a dad go, goes home, he is busy in his mobile phone with children playing around, or maybe they're also having their own devices. So this human to human communication has gone. Incidentally, and so that's why I asked that we should clap for somebody who is not on Facebook, right? Now we go to internet of content. This is where we talk about emails. We talk about basically information, entertainment. And then internet of services, which is web, which is all about e-commerce. Internet of people, when we were able to communicate with people over net using Facebook and social media. And now we're talking about internet of things. <clears throat> we're talking about machine to machine communication. We're talking about how would machine communicate to us. Now, we communicating with machine is different than machine communicating to us. So can machine communicate to us? Yes. Can you give an example? Right, so that is a communication going on with reference to the device which is helping you listen, right? Now I'm talking about can basically your pen, can basically your jacket, can this uh, table, can this mic, can this, all these equipment that you see, all these things that we see, can these communicate with us? Warning while driving, cars communicating with us, right? Any, any other example that can, can you think about? Sorry? Yeah. So the VR glasses? VR glasses. Not the VR glasses. Okay. The Google glasses. So the theory behind that launch was that uh, they, you could walk into a showroom or the mall, could identify what item you wanted to pick up. You could ask the glass to scan it, check your bank balance whether it's there or not, and issue an order to be delivered at the address maintained. Fair enough. So we're talking about our, our glasses also communicating. Now, for example, uh, doctors say that we, we should brush twice. How many of you brush twice in a, in a day? Now, can the health department check this out automatically, whether you're really brushing or not? Yes, no, not believable? It's a small sensor. If you just put it inside your toothbrush, every time you brush, it will give a signal to the health industry. And because of that, your insurance policies will play, his dental insurance policy. Just because you're not brushing twice, we'll increase your premium by two times. Mm -hmm. I think I lost my mind, but, but can you hear me at the back? Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Now this is where the, the things, when we talk about IOT, we're talking about normal things communicating via internet. That's why it is called as internet of things. Are you, are you with me? Yes. So when we talk about all of your project managers here, most of us are. Now, incidentally, let me, Tell you what happened. 
yesterday I was walking with one of my friends and I was talking about Candy Crush. Is, have you heard about Candy Crush? Is it a popular game now? No, it is not anymore. But it was. Couple of years back, it was one of the most popular games. Now the question here is, how many of you have played Candy Crush? All of you? Are you still playing it? All right. Was there, is there somebody in the room who got addicted to Candy Crush? Be, be honest, okay? There's nothing to be shy about. So what happened is, I was talking to my wife, and um, she incidentally, three years back, got into Candy Crush. And um, when there's lunch time, Candy Crush. Dinner time, Candy Crush. So do you have guts to say this to your wife <laughs> as a PM? So what did I say? I told her that, look, uh, I think you've got addicted. <clears throat> now, that was it, guys. That was the stupidest mistake I made that day. And she stopped talking to me. She threw all things around and said, what do you mean I'm addicted? I, I don't get addicted to anything. Solid. Very nice. I said, move out. OK, no, no, sorry. Obviously, we will say sorry to things like that, right? Now, incidentally, after three days, she came back and agreed to it. So then I was telling this story to my friends and they said that, look, you are the greatest project manager because you got an agreement from your wife. How many of you have been able to get an agreement from your wife, guys? This was accidental. Okay, this is not something which is intentional. Now, point here is on a sat this today's Saturday, you guys are here. How many of your wives actually agreed for you to attend this conference? <clears throat> How many of you told lies to attend this conference out here? Are you all speaking truth at home? to your spouses, whoever is there, right? Now think about internet of things that your wife will be able to track you down and say whether this guy has gone to holiday and to attend the conference or not. Now that is IoT. There are pluses and there are minuses. So let me quickly run you through some of the case studies. Then we'll jump onto the little IoT demo and we'll connect to the PM, okay? Are you guys with me? Definition-wise, okay, let me quickly show the definition as well. This is where we talk about the quick definition. This is taken from Wikipedia. Is the network of physical devices, vehicles, home appliances, and other items embedded with electronics, software, sensors, and all those things. And as I explained, all these physical devices start communicating. And we can collect data. We can utilize this. We can apply machine learning. We can apply AI. All those things, this all internet of things. This is where we talk about the, the image. We're talking about plants. We talk about everything that you can imagine, guys, is a use case. And if there's a brilliant idea with you guys, take it to the industry. I think you can really create a solution which will be very, very bright and which will uh, give you a lot of money as well. Be an entrepreneur too. <clears throat> now the quick use cases that I'm going to talk about, first one. Now this is a big washroom data. <clears throat> All of us use washroom? Have you been to the, the hotel washroom since morning? Now what if basically at the dispensing, the soap dispensing machine tells that there is no more soap? What if basically the toilet paper tells automatically that there is no more toilet paper? Now there is an there is a organization which is using this kind of uh, setup, and it is actually going to predict when basically the the supplies are over. Based on that, they have come come up with a business solution, and they are basically selling all this. They are deploying it in football fields. They are deploying it in hospital. The behaviors change. The crowd behaviors change. Based on that, they are being able to sell this kind of a solution where the data is being collected right from the washroom. All things that are installed in the washroom give signals, the sensors are there. Based on that, the supplies and business is controlled. This is one use case. <coughs> Second use case is from the industry, which is basically manufacturing paper. Where, when we talk about paper manufacturing, all these spindles that you see, that actually runs into multiple spindles. And if there is basically some breakage happening somewhere, the entire setup will take four to five hours. And Bringing down the entire factory, which is producing mass paper rolls, runs into millions of US dollars losses. Now what these guys have done, they have deployed sensors. They are monitoring all these machines, 200 values per three seconds. Based on that, they are able to predict when will a machine break down. And they are able to predict and fix it in advance. Now this is again industrial IoT example. This is another example we were talking about supplies. For example, Amazon or any organization which has got a delivery or courier going on, all trucks anywhere in the globe, they're able to track, everything is going on, and they can tell exactly when the truck or when the vehicle should be actually maintained, which supply is stuck where, they can give all this information, all predictive analysis, including delivery things, all done using IoT. 
All right. Any questions so far? So I, I actually talked about three use cases, but there are plenty. So if you were to basically check it out, IoT is being utilized left and right, and there are a lot of things happening in India as well. And this one, is, this one is an example from a beer manufacturing factory. It is actually able to predict that what is the temperature inside and whether the brewing is going okay or not, and whether things will go bad for a brewing factory or not. Another case study is from India. This is happening in Hyderabad, which is basically a Karthik poultry farm. And uh, when you talk about chickens, they, how many of you are non-veg here? Are you guys okay if I talk about chickens? <laughs> so, do you know what is the ambient temperature that the chicken should be farmed? Are, is chicken being farmed here? Yes, right? Now, if it, and I was uh, going through this case study and I found out that if a, if a chicken is farmed between 26 degree to 30 degree centigrade, they remain healthy. Anything beyond that, their health goes down. Obviously, as a consumer, we will not know which, whether the chicken that we are consuming is healthy or not. But on a, over a period of time, this actually causes problems. So this poultry farm, which is in Hyderabad, is able to monitor the temperature of their enclosure out here. And based on that, if the temperature goes up, they put on the sprinklers. This is a very simple IoT example. So they're just monitoring the temperature, and they're actually conveying it to a motor device. Based on that, the sprinklers are on. Fair enough, this is actually what happens, that the temperature monitoring system is there, thermometer. Based on that, they're able to maintain the room temperature and promise a healthier chicken and their sales have grown tremendously. So compared to other farms, this farm, basically chickens are not available easily because it just sells like hotcake. Not because they told that they're implementing IoT, just because their chickens are healthier. And people have realized that the tastes are better and all those things. Fair enough. So this is a, something happening around us. And there are so many other things happening around in India as well that you can actually utilize it you can think upon your ideas as well. So what we will do is we'll quickly do a Raspberry Pi demo, which actually connects with an IoT. So the question here is, how many of you have heard about Raspberry Pi before? One, two, three, four, five. Now, Raspberry Pi, to give you a, a perspective, is a small mini computer in itself, very small. So if you look at it here, uh, I don't know whether it, uh, This is a Raspberry Pi. Now this is being given to every fourth standard student in UK and they're programming on it. This is where the advancement are happening around us, okay? Now let me quickly show you, this is what the motherboard looks like. It has got basically a CPU which is 1.2 gigahertz processor. It has got four USB, it has got an HDMI. It has basically, a, there's a camera module out here which can actually monitor remotely, whatever we're talking about, all remote cameras can be uh, monitored using this. Then it has got basically a disk serial interface here. But the most important as aspect is, sorry. What did I go do here? All right. The, the most in interesting aspect is these pins which are called as GPIO pins, general purpose input output pins, right? This is where we start connecting our machine, which is 1.2 gigahertz full computer. So there are other processors as well. Uh, you might have heard about Arduino as well, but this is the most powerful uh, machine which is being used for IoT implementation and for educational purposes as well. So the applications for Raspberry Pis are many. What we are going to demo right now are few things. So I don't know whether you can see it from there or not, let me quickly show things here. What we have done, can you see it guys? Now what we are doing is we are having a serial connection here. And there is basically a breadboard here, and there is an LED glowing out here. Can you see it here? Now, I am going to run a small experiment which is going to do a blinking of an LED, which is a simple one, and later on I am going to show you that how you can control it from a mobile device as well. So I am using basically Python, which is an inbuilt uh, language on Raspberry Pi.
So if you, right here in the front, if you see, people can actually see that the, the LED here will blink. Can you, you can stand up, guys. If you want to see, maybe you can check it out here, that there is an LED which actually go, glows out here. Yes. Yes. Sure. No problem. Right. So what happens is that uh, I'm using a serial interface. Serial interface is connected to the USB drive. And from USB drive, I'm using basically a terminal, which is like a putty. P-U-T-T-Y, have you heard about? It's a remote telnet. Now, this actually interface, if you look, this is Terra term VT. So from a Terra term VT, a serial connection or a serial bus is using, which converts to USB drive. And on basically Raspberry Pi, we are using a USB drive again, which connects to the, the Bluetooth driver of a Raspberry Pi is connected using a serial interface of a, uh, our USB drive. That's where basically the connection is happening. So no, extra tools are required. no extra tools are required. In fact, Raspberry Pi has got an HDMI interface. So I really don't uh, really want a serial interface. I can actually plug it into a monitor or I can plug it into a television, for example, and I can do whatever I want. Since we are doing a demo out here, I don't have two HDMI ports. I would have rather basically uh, given you a different HDMI port and shown you all this. Does but it come with an operating Yes, so Raspberry Pi comes with a standard Raspbian uh, OS, which is nothing but a uh, Unix flavor. It's a full-fledged Unix, GNU uh, Unix flavor installed ready-made on it. So if you have worked with any Unix flavor, you can actually start using it right away. It has got inbuilt Java, it has got inbuilt uh, Python, you can even run Tomcat on it, you can run all those things. So for all those who are project managers and we were talking technical, don't get worried, okay? Because that is not, we would really intend going into, but it is good that if you're asking, I could answer it. Sounds good, any other question? Yes. 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 All internet, when we talk about a toothbrush, talking to somebody, the insurance company, Ultimately, how would they talk? So there would be a sensor which communicates to a small device like Raspberry Pi or a processor, which connects to a Wi-Fi module, which connects to the cloud. From the cloud, the data goes back where? To the service provider. So ultimately, everything is through some kind of a protocol. And 99% of the time, it is simple internet protocol. Right? So we will also show you a demo where, right now I am just showing a simple exercise by glowing an LED on and off, but then can we do it through internet? Okay. Now, the challenge here is, there are two things. One is LED, trans LED operation is simple. Uh, how many of you are from electronics background? So LED is how much volt, how much power does it need? Correct? And what about basically a light bulb? Now, there is a massive difference between operating an LED versus operating a physical electrical device. And that can be done through internet. I'm just going to show you a demo how you can operate uh, light bulbs or operate any electrical devices, motors, everything through internet, right? That's what the, the demo that we will do. Now, the question here is, uh, when we do all this, we convert electronics and then we use a relay. So we will just uh, demo that too. Uh, so for example, let, uh, Harsh, can we just plug the light bulb here? All right. All right, so what I'm going to do is again run this. This is as simple right now, there is no internet of things here. It is a direct connection going on. Just to show you, rather than LED right now, the bulb is being operated from a serial interface and the input output pins that I showed you on the Raspberry Pi is what basically is driving this on off through a relay. If you keep a silence, you can see the relay also making a sound, tuck. Can you hear that tuck? Now that is basically a relay converting an electronic to electrical signal so that we can control things out here. Is that okay? Now let me, uh, let me quickly show you something here. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm starting a, a web server on the Raspberry Pi and now we can actually control things right from the browser. Can you see the browser, guys? 
So the IP address, let me also show you the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Let me shut it out again. And I let me show you the IF config here. The IP address is this. 192.168.225.152. Now what I have done is I have brought basically a Reliance dongle. It is acting like a router. So the Raspberry Pi is connected to this and my laptop also is connected to the same internet router. So that what happens is now I can actually control and I can communicate on the same router. Is that okay with you guys all? So I have created a private network here. Now when I go here, let me, uh, let me start the program again. So the server starts. So it is actually running on a port 8080. Okay. And now this is a button which is on Internet Explorer or Chrome. And I'm controlling basically using this simple button. Can I use my mobile? Now let's try to. This is, this is now Internet of Things, guys. You guys will not be able to type it because you are not on the same network. But if I'm using cloud, then it becomes a fully enabled Internet of Things. I'm just typing 192.168.225.152. All right. So this is actually on my mobile. So I'm asking uh, Rohit, our previous speaker, to press one button. Bubble? Yeah, any? Sounds good. Can you hear the, the bulb going on? Can anybody at the back would like to try? So you see this? Again, I've opened a browser. Can you see the input button or toggle button? Can you just press one of these? Can you see the bulb? Press it again. And you see that at the back, there is a request going to the Raspberry server. Now, how many of you heard about Alexa? Okay, Amazon Echo. Yes, it's one of the most popular devices which is in US and India also it's being sold now. This is just mobile. Now you can control everything using voice. So what would happen is you can say Alexa, can you put the lights on? It will do. Now that is all the capability that you can do. This is just a simple example. So when we talked about basically um, Devesh, we were talking about uh, the AI example, and he talked about NLP, natural language processing. Uh, what Amazon has done is that it is basically toned down the English language, and even if my mom is speaking now, she, the Alexa understands that. And it, then it goes to the cloud, fetches the information. Not only fetches the information, it can actually control any device. So we're talking about enable, enabling all these things and making sure that it happens. Are you guys with me now? So any, any questions on Raspberry Pi? Any questions on, yeah. Said uh, Python is the OS or whatever program. Python is a language. language. How many of you yeah. heard about Java? Yeah, Java. We have. It is just like Java. Yeah. So Python is a language. Yes. So is for us uh, Raspberry Pi is the user-friendly programming tool or what? Okay. So first of all, Windows. We understand it is an OS. Yes. Right. So can you run Java on Windows? Yes. Can you run Python on Windows? Yes. Yes. Raspberry Pi is a Linux OS, mm -hmm. which means that on the OS. Whatever languages we can do, we can run it. And in fact, the, the, the operating part, I can convert that into a web interface. I can convert that into a voice interface so that you don't need to actually know Raspberry Pi. This is implementers. From a project management perspective, you really need to don't need to code. But if you understand that what are the capabilities and how it is being done, it is just a voice command or it is just a keyboard press. For example, when you go to Facebook and you say like, we are controlling light on, on, off, using a simple device. So from a language perspective, the programming language can be Python, programming language can be Node.js and any other uh, front end uh, on it, or it could be Java, it doesn't matter. So that is an implementation part. What we are showing you is an example which is driven from Python, because by the way, Python is the number one language in US. Java has become number two, because Python, it seems, is easier than Java. 
as you said ki python it's a okay it's a yeah. programming language yes okay but uh, for a user friendly environment point of view yeah. is there any uh, shorter I means uh, uh, friendly version available so by the for way when we say python is it user friendly or not don't get worried guys okay so because it is as simple one line command uh, to an input say one just like when you say a switch on or off what happens is that there the, the electrical connection becomes one or zero right in our world when we say python it is basically one line single line where you say gpipo pin so when you talk about the raspberry pi and we showed you all those pins every pin can control any number of devices that you want so when we say to that pin send one it actually translates to an electrical command and it is on so from a command pr perspective from a language perspective as simple as one line so means a user point of view it's a graphical interface will be available yes so, so for that from it will be easy, right? for my mom perspective who doesn't yeah. know anything about computers she doesn't need to know about raspberry pi we can control it through voice so my mom who's using alexa right now she will say can i can alexa can you put this drawing room hall light on that's all so the alexa will send a command to uh, the cloud cloud will communicate to raspberry pi or any iot device and it knows which is a drawing room hall tube light or drawing room hall led light and it will turn it on ac can be turned it on so all that is simple interface to the end user end user does not need to worry about it thank you sounds good yeah yeah yes now, is the internet connectivity uh, sim card connectivity or a dongle or uh, wifi what is the predominant so, mode of uh, yeah so the connection here is how do we transfer the data and how can we communicate with it so one is basically in offline if you don't have a real time connectivity then it does not work so finally it has to actually understand some way of communicating so all across the globe basically there is all this telephone sim cards basically which are being used, even in africa when we talk about all the plants so for example the question here is uh, how do i monitor my plants in the agriculture field right can it can you determine how much water do you need to supply to a plant and it can be controlled automatically without any intervention so there are sensors do you know how much does a sensor uh, harsh do we have a sensor with us so a sensor is a very small sensor maybe we we can show you an experiment where uh, the sensor data is available and all that can be transferred using a sim card this is a sensor and this is basically a small uh, ic circuit which actually can do two things it can monitor humidity and it can actually monitor uh, temperature as well harsh can you run try to run let me see let quickly show you So this is DHT device. How much time we have? Okay. Oh. Simple test new. So that is what I am going to run. How should we be connected? Ha. Huh. So okay. Do you see the sensor data actually showing you what is the room temperature right now? It will stabilize. So when it began, it began with 22, and now it is showing 24. But based on what I said, basically the poultry farm that we said, it's a simple monitoring device whereby basically the sensor is picked up. And all this, your question was valid. Where how does it get communicated? Now it is through a SIM device, or it could be basically through a dongle. Does not matter as long as you are a very very low bandwidth internet connection. We can actually uh, utilize it. Yes. So what is happening is, and you should thank Mukesh Ambani for that. You will see a huge number of transitions happening towards basically dongles. So what I am actually using is right now a dongle with a, and we tested out here. It is actually giving us around 4 Mbps or 5 Mbps speed right here in this conference hall. And if I test it on my mobile, my mobile internet speed, which is 4G, does not go beyond 1 Mbps. So if you want to put sensor. Like yes. Poultry, yeah. Do you have the mic? Yeah, I have. Yeah, can you just, uh, for the benefit? OK, what I'm asking is that if there is a use case of a smart home, yeah. or you are automating uh, in a home, or a yeah. factory, or something, now you cannot put so many dongles. No, one dongle is sufficient. No, no. So by the I'm saying that uh, across the entire home, 
if you if you want to automate lighting or probably if you want to automate uh, automate temperature or anything right so you will have multiple sensors multiple devices so do we put dongle inside each device or we create no. wi-fi or very good question question here is that does every sensor connect directly to the internet no that is why you need processors like raspberry pi or you need processors like arduino so for the entire home automation you only need one dongle which will get connected and all the sensors will connect through wires to that particular device and then you can control it from wherever you want that's the beauty of it and and that beauty is means that if you have a mobile phone and you go outside your home then also you can control everything so from a uh, connection perspective every sensor and the example that i was giving was for from an agricultural field if you talk about basically one acre land and if you were growing basically for example pomegranate trees or plants how many pomegranate trees can be grown in a one acre plant maybe thousands maybe 2000 right now if you want to monitor how much temperature is there whether the the pomegranate or anar is growing properly or not it is very simple because now you have to implant sensors across it connect through wires and make sure that you can control and the sensor cost is very minimal do you know how much does a sensor cost any rough idea can anybody just raise their hand and say give a give a example of what what would be the cost of a sensor 500 rupees 1000 rupees if i have 2000 plants and if i were to basically install a sensor which is 500 rupees or 1000 rupees would the the farmers accept that a sensor does not cost more than 2 rupees 5 rupees 10 rupees and that is if you were to basically go to lamington road and get it if you are talking about industrial automation the sensors will run into even less than a rupee yes yes so the pi cost is much more normally in industrial automation pies are not used because the pi cost itself is 3000 odd rupees we are just doing a demo here that's why we thought we will just uh, use uh, uh, raspberry pi but for industrial automation you have got microprocessors which are even cheaper so arduino itself costs 800 rupees and you can actually have a processor in itself a controller so those are not processor this is a processor if you talk about controllers are as little as 100 rupees or 200 rupees with a 100 rupees 200 rupees controllers you can control the entire farms and with sensors so the entire budget of actual equipment is extremely less question yeah so yeah no controllers yeah so controllers will the wi-fi cost will get increased so you will add that cost to it sounds good so question where was that uh, would the controllers come with wi-fi raspberry comes with a wi-fi connection but most of the other cheaper controllers don't come yes electronic and is about yes. how to correlate with the management yes. project management. thank you and i've got basically a instruction as well let us quickly go back there let me show you how do you basically make an impact for So this is where the relevance of IoT comes basically to the project management. Where is my changer? So there are three areas where I think it is very, very relevant to every project manager who is sitting out here or outside. First one, IoT simplifies project management. We'll say how. Number two, there is an increased demand, big increased demand about IoT things. There's a lot of complexity. And when we talk about complex projects, it requires astute project management. So this would increase the number of jobs for PMs. It would require astute management uh, abilities so that you can manage IoT implementation. The biggest lacuna in IoT is the maturity of the implementation. And then every PM who is aspiring to basically go into IoT side can just by the basic skills of IoT and the project management skill can drive a full-fledged IoT project. Number three, it has a huge impact on the project management. So we'll quickly go through this. Number one, let me quickly show you how does it simplify. First simplification, it actually eases or ease of monitoring and maintenance through sensors. Large construction project going on, thousands of trucks being used. Can you monitor ingress and outgress of all that? Can you know exactly whether that truck is going inside or coming out? Can you monitor the weight of the truck, how much material is coming in, how much is going out? All that is available to you. So you just need to implement, think about implementation in your project management activities and you can actually solve some of these problems. Cost management, reduced, basically the tracking of vehicles with optimized thing, reducing wastage. So for example, if it is a prefabricated product, so for example, how much inventory should I maintain? If I can find that out, I can easily be able to say just in time. So if you look at the third point, 
Inventory management goes with reduced wastage, and we can actually do just-in-time delivery of equipment and components based on the need. Again, something that would be very relevant from a simplified uh, way of doing things for a project manager. Because the data is available, and it is all for us to utilize then. Then better resource management. We talk about how much resources are being used, how much accurate manpower is there, who's doing what. All of that can be controlled electronically. When does somebody walk in? All that sensor data is available for us to utilize. And the most important part is better retrospective. What is retrospective? Projects that has been done. And if I have all this data available with me, I can analyze it, I can use it, and I can make a better decision next time. Better estimation, better decisions, all for project managers using IoT devices, IoT sensors, and the data that is available. Sounds good? Second point, increase demand and complexity. So for example, demand, huge IoT projects, we talked about 50 billion objects as per Wikipedia. Uh, more projects, PM will need to understand IoT, that is important thing. Uh, second is increased complexity. So let's take an example here. We talk about Amazon delivering packages via drones. Do you think it would be complex? Very complex. Because dro these dr drones will need to communicate with customers, with employees, with corporate office. So there is a lot of interconnection happening, different data is happening across. So PMs are needed in research and development, development and even upgrades, integration. All those areas that we talk about, all complexities that we talk about, everywhere there is a complexity and large complex projects with interactions, integration of different systems requires astute project management guys. Uncertainties are there. So for example, what we talk about, all volatility, this is actually like not a war zone, but anything can fail. If, if one sensor gives you wrong data, so we talk about if implementations are going on and things are not working fine, how do you make sure that the implementation goes successful? So this is where we, I showed you the first slide, where, where yeah, five minutes, I should be able to wrap up. So we talk about IoT rate, uh, the, the adoption rates have increased. But if we talk about basically, the maturity is extremely low. That is where the astute project management skills are required. Are you guys with me? Third point. So we talk about impact. First of all, uh, when we talk about impact, one thing is that how can we utilize this and where is the impact coming from? When we talk about increased collaboration, can we use it for our own purposes? Collaboration between customers, between teams, all that is increased, substantially high. Then we talk about big data analytics, large real-time sensor data is available. We can increase process efficiencies, which will, there is two things. One is process efficiencies can be increased. That is, the, the process efficiency will get impacted. Second impacted thing is security. So how do we make sure that this data is secure? How do we make sure that nobody else is utilizing this data? Third, and there is an increased role of technology and tools. Very, very true. And we need to be responsive to change. So change is something which is going to happen. How do we manage that? Because IoT is enabling that change big time. Integration of different things. We talk about this change happening faster. So role of agile, role of DevOps is something that we should be aware of. Because all, all this requires faster delivery, faster changes. We need to be aware of all that. And shared ownership and accountability. All of us basically are visible. If you're not accountable, we will not be able to deliver things. So this is where we are. Key takeaways, number one, for a PM, we need to understand the IoT landscape. Use the IoT challenge as an opportunity because there are a lot of projects which will come our way and we need to utilize our project management skills to deliver it. Uh, we need to understand DevOps and Agile for sure so that we can uh, use that to manage things better. And also the technical skills, if we can make that better, that will come in handy. With that, let me thank you and open for questions. Any more questions? I think it's already covered. Yeah, yeah so we, we made it interactive. I guess you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, you can connect with me on my Twitter handle. I'm very active on that. Uh, my LinkedIn profile is there. And you can actually call me anytime. Uh, message me first so that. <laughs> just in case if I'm not responding. Any other things, feel free to connect, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, just request you to sure. wait here for some time. Uh, another insightful session coming to an end. Uh, my personal question is, if devices are going to be smart, smarter, or smartest, 
will it replace human beings in the long run so that answer actually if you look at it was uh, done very well by uh, i think the previous uh, keynote speaker right uh, if we cannot have a machine walk like a 3 year old child i think they cannot replace us the most important thing is now how do we use technology so it's all about thinking it's all about utilizing that this is where this iot can be utilized for example i have got a terrace garden can i operate basically the water delivery and the manure delivery through telephone or through internet yes can you monitor things which you would like to can you ma manage the entire project using sensors so it's just a basically the starting point of where the smartness is going we are giving the ability for the things to talk to us smartness is given by us as human beings that's where the challenge is okay thank you so yeah. much uh, i like to call upon uh, mr sachin kurgaonkar from pmi mumbai chapter to felicitate mr garg thank you sir uh, we'll now break for lunch uh, the lunch will continue till 2:15 then we again have sessions from 2:15 till the tea time uh, in separate tracks so see you then thank you <laughs>